Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. New season of his podcast, Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin, uh, available, of course, on iHeartRadio. Uh, he's back with more podcasts. He's working, a working actor in Hollywood and outside of Hollywood. Alec Baldwin, it's great to have you on the show today. Thanks for being here. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, you know, I was told that your show is a juggernaut. This, the, the Elvis Duran show is a monolithic podcast. Everyone said, to do, you're going to do a podcast. They named all the other podcasts. They said, no, no. You got to do Elvis Duran show. What's the secret to your success? How have you become so successful, Elvis Duran? Notice how I'm flipping and I'm interviewing <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, wait a second. Hold on a second. You know what? We, we're we're on our 25th year, by the way, and we've been successful because we turn crap around just like you did. We know how to do that. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's weird, though, especially in the podcast. You have a great, great relaxing way of sitting down and getting to the getting to the root of everything with your guests. And is that unusual and difficult for you to actually turn it around and be asking the questions rather than being answering the questions? No. Well, two things. One is that the real crux of it uh, is about appreciation. We don't bring anybody on where we don't have a real deep level of it's It's easy when you love the people's work or you admire their work with their people in public policy. If I disagree with them, then I want to learn. I mean, there, there are people we do where it's not uh, celebrating them as artists. Like one of our shows that's coming out is uh, uh, Mick Fleetwood uh, from Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh my God, it was like, what a dream come true to talk to him for an hour. You know, I, I just, I worship him, he's so talented. And uh, our first show was Kristen Bell, who I knew who she was and I knew what she's done, but I wasn't prepared for how, you know, winning she is off mic, if you will, as she is on the mic. And she's really just in a, lovely lovely and very uh, uh interesting woman so for me i get to meet people i don't know i get to celebrate people i love i mean i uh, i've had people say to me because of the nature of so many rock stars i've had on from my youth you know i had john anderson from yes and joe jackson and roger daltrey and billy joel and my friend kurt anderson said man you're really stuck in the 70s aren't you <laughs> it's true <laughs> I said, yeah, yes, I am, really. I but am. that's where you want to be. This is this. is You're doing what you want to do. This, is, You can see or actually hear the passion you have for, for I love interviews. most of the people. The ones we do, I really love. Because my original show, when Kathy Russo, who's my producer, again, I started with her. Then we split up and she went and did other things. And then now we're back together again, Kathy, uh, um, who's a veteran producer, radio producer. We're back together. Our original conception for the show was very much like what you have. We were going to have like a, a, a Howard-esque bullpen of characters and we were going to have me and I had a friend of mine who was a comic, a woman who was a comic and do the news and the weather. And now Skiri, I think, fits this description. We were going to have somebody on the show. We were going to call him the kid. And the kid was someone who was going to go out every night and party his ass off. Right. And then come back on the show and tell us, what did he do last night? So I'd say, okay, let's bring on the kid. What'd you do last night, kid? And he described the debauchery of him, like going to nightclubs and partying and everything and all the things we're too old to do. So we had a really kind of a cool idea for your kind of format. And then the people from NYC were like, no, no, it's just you at a microphone. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> want to lower the cost. Want to lower the cost. <clears throat> so you can still do that in the future. Don't don't rule yeah. it out. Well, I was hoping you'd have me on your show. I could come you're, to you're here. There you go. And, and as we look at each other in this Zoom room, it's very, very a la match game in a way. I mean, yeah. there's there's Charles Nelson I, Riley up I there. Love, That's scary. I love, I love <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, but, you know, so I must say, I must admit to you, having you here with us is great because we're fans of what you do. Of match game. Let's start there. Let's let's go. Let's talk about 30 Rock. Let, oh, you know, it's and my how, favorite and now, show ever. And now you're conquering the world of podcast. You know, Scary actually does a podcast. It's doing very well. Why don't you just yeah. stick to, you know, TV so he can have some more space in his lane? You're kind of... Yeah, leave him alone. Leave him alone. You're effing him up a little bit. <laughs> all right, guys. Alec Baldwin's here. What do you want to talk about? Oh, look how oh. he's changing. Oh. Oh. He all of a sudden oh, just outside. went from the middle of an aquarium <laughs> to the middle of the woods. You see, when I see that, all I think about are, are ticks. I'm, wood now. I'm scared. You're scaring me. There's ticks. <laughs> Scary background. A is deer is going to run by at any second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Gandhi, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering, obviously, like the pandemic has been crazy. You're staying at home and, well, kind of staying at home and doing all of this stuff. Is that tough to launch something like a podcast in the middle of all of this with all of the crazy going on? 
Well, we really, uh, I think the best way to view it is that we moved the podcast. We did it for eight years at WNYC. Mm -hmm. We did it in public radio for a long time. And we had, you know, uh, I, I asked for some statistics to help guide us in what we were doing. And, you know, we had 89 million downloads, which is not over eight, over eight years, that might seem like much. But for a show that came out every other week, because when you post every day, when you post every week, the more content you have, the more likely you are to generate a, a big audience. The shows that really dominate and the shows that do well, they're on every day or every week. We're on every other week. And so as we are relaunching the show with iHeart, we're thinking of changing that maybe and doing, you know, 40 shows a year as opposed to 30. We used to do 30 because we would double down on the holidays. Anyway, we're not launching, we're kind of relaunching and we're bringing a, a, a pretty decent sized audience with us. And uh, I don't need to tell you that podcasts become uh, uh, you know, that information or that entertainment, that spoken word thing that's in people's ears, mm -hmm. like music, so they can be doing anything. They can be cleaning the kitchen, they can be packing their bags, they can be driving their car, they can be working out. They can consume the product if there's no visual. I, I love radio because there's no visual. Visual, you've got to make an appointment with. You can't be driving right. your car watching a movie, you know, unless it's Skiri, who I think is probably naked <laughs> in the car. <laughs> We don't want to talk about what he's watching in the car. He's in the car. <laughs> yep. Would you rather be like doing a podcast where like you don't have to get dressed up and put hair and makeup and all that? Or do you just wait, love? Wait, wait and... a second. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean by don't get dressed up? You know. You know. <laughs> I, see That's hours fancy black tea. I see hours of work right there. Or do you really <laughs> love just. Now we need another scary background. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> But what, what was your question? Or do you really just still love that grind so much where you just, you know, you get up, you get your hair and makeup done, you go into work, stuff like that? <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> That's Beatles. Um, the, the, uh, no, I, I, I like any kind of work that, I mean, at my age now, which I've done a few things uh, here and there, it, it's anything that's not duplicative of what I've already done. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times in movies and TV, they say, you know, get that guy in here who's going to do that thing that we've seen him do before and have him do that for us. And uh, I, uh, I'm i doing this television uh, miniseries now for NBC Peacock called Dr. Death, which is about um, this real life crime drama that was produced, the podcast, very successful podcast. Yes, we love that podcast. We were obsessed with it. So Laura Beal, who wrote the podcast, a journalist down in the Texas, in the Dallas area, wrote, produced, narrated herself. The thing was a huge success. And we're doing the film version of that about this guy, Christopher Dunch, yeah. who was a, uh, the darling of the Dallas orthopedic surgical community who goes nuts and becomes a drug addict and like women and lap dances and partying all the time. And he goes into the operating room like he's been up all night on blow. His hands are shaking. He kills two people. He cripples four people. And it's this very, very tough, really, really uh, uh, sinister story. And we're doing that. We're shooting that right now in New York. Wow. And Joshua so much, Jackson, Joshua so much, Jackson, the lead, and Christian Slater. Oh, wow. Love them. Love them. So, so, much, so much has happened in your, in your career since Beetlejuice to today. Yeah. I, mean, it, it, I mean, please, you know, don't need to recreate Beetlejuice, one of our favorite movies of all time. But working out of the house. Are you, are you enjoying, like you're doing right now, do you enjoy working out of the house as opposed to going to the studio every day? Um, no, meaning I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the time that I've had to have this, uh, uh, you know, uh, blanket of time with my kids. And, you know, my wife and I have five kids. Right. I'm, I'm 62 years old and I've got a three month old baby before he's four. Now he just turned four months. Hmm. I got a seven year old. We, we were laying in bed the other day with a seven year old daughter and our three month old baby. And I turned to my wife and I said, we have three other kids in between these two. <laughs> we have, we have five kids, seven and under. So it's a little bit of a, uh, of a, I tell people it's uh the Shining meets the Little Rascals every day. I don't know. You know, we've been locked down in our houses uh, since March. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, yeah. for instance, we, we finished our radio show in New York, and I ran upstairs. I cleaned up dog crap under the piano, came back down to do the show. I mean, it. Uh, I actually. The dog thing? Uh, Max. So, I, I mean, I, I, I do, we fold laundry while we're working. It's kind of nice. But eventually, we're going to have to get back to the city. We, we miss right. it. So I do miss. I do miss. Uh, I don't like the self-engineering thing. I don't like the self-producing thing. I don't like 
<clears throat> having to set all this up. I mean, I, I like, I mean, as I'm sure is true with you, I mean, I've worked with some of the best technical people. I've worked in some of the greatest spaces in New York and LA and London and all over the world. And, you know, but mostly in New York, you know, great recording facilities. And it's nice to walk into a room and you just talk and focus on that as right. opposed to where do I stick this jack? And where I'll tell you where I'd like to stick this jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, no, but, we are, but we are back to the podcast just to see that we are relaunching the podcast to pick up our old uh, public radio audience. And uh, I'm very excited to be with iHeart to try to grow. You know, commercial radio uh, is, uh, is different. And I was very grateful to have the public radio audience. The public radio audience is a very uniquely defined audience. We decided that um, if we want to grow the show, a place like iHeart, indeed iHeart itself, was the best choice for us. Alec, you've done you know movies and television your your entire career, and having doing a podcast now, do you enjoy the freedom to be able to kind of do what you want to do? And whether it's even you, know, you can use filthy language, you can say things that you can't say on uh, on the uh, on television. Are you enjoying that freedom now? Is it different for you? I don't. I don't really think, I think it's funny. I think it's funny that you isolate the benefits of the podcast experience to using vulgar language. <laughs> Not just one of them. Plus, you can also, that's it. Yeah. I'm mean, going to go another direction. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say <clears throat> that what I like is that we have complete independence over who the guests are. So if I, if I read an article, if I discover someone, man, woman, whatever they're writing about, about, you know, uh, uh, bail reform, you know, it could be like a really, really socially relevant topic. And I, you know, we, we go through the, we meander our way toward accessing that person, inviting that person. Usually we have some good success. Sometimes we don't get a response. Sometimes people, you know, they say no without saying no, you know, without saying anything. And, <clears throat> but I'm completely self-determining as to who the guests are. So we have a mix of public policy. When I was at NYC, we did a volume of shows that focused on New York itself, things that were particular to New York. And then, of course, celebrities and famous artists and writers and musicians and so forth. So they let me do whatever I want to do, which I love that. It's, it's my thing. And I, you know, good or bad, sink or swim, it's something that, that I created and I kind of decide. I'm you know, the decider. It's all you. It's all you, baby. You know, I'll tell you, you know, we've been doing this radio show for 25 years. And on the radio, on like 80 stations across the country. Wait, 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 wait. You've been doing it for 25 years? Yeah, yeah. 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 This morning show <laughs> at Z100 <laughs> in New York has been on for 25 women, years. These two women, they weren't even alive 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Was <laughs> that was very, very good, alive. though. <laughs> they were very alive. They've got some great well, surgeons. Look at that. Well, the thing is, you know, we've been under the, under the umbrella of FCC rules. We can't say fuck or shit or, you know. You can't? Well, we just did. See, we'll edit that out when we run this on the yeah. radio. But this is going to be on the podcast form. We can finally, we can finally, you know, just let one slip every once in a while. It's awesome to have that, that freedom. It's great. You, yep. So your show's on the radio. You're on regular broadcast radio and yeah. your podcast. Yeah. And on the iHeart podcast, you can you can drop a few bombs every now and then. And people yeah. love it. They oh, yeah. will ask yeah. for it. They're That's saying, their we thing. love yeah. it when you say the F word. Say it more. Say it, Danielle. <laughs> so, say it. When no, I say no, fuck, I they Elvis, love it. Say it. I want to ask Elvis, who's the nastiest one of the crew here? Who's Danielle. The I knew, I, it. The, I knew it. I have the worst mouth. The Bronx. Now you can tell because all the red in the background. See all the red? Yeah. <laughs> Anger. The and my hair. Red, so People know. who have a lot of red, where red is one of their primary colors, they're filthy. They're That's filthy. it. Filthy. <laughs> filthy, <laughs> dirty Danielle. You're disgusting. So well, look, uh, I'm so, so, we're, we're so honored to have you on our show, Alec. And uh, here's the thing with Alec Baldwin, available on iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. Support. And you know what? It's so great to listen to someone just do what they want to do because you know it's coming from their heart, from their soul, and uh, it's right there. And uh, congratulations to you on continuing your podcast. Are we done already? We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Oh, we're done. <laughs> but, but I tell you what, once we open up again and when you're in the city, we would love to have you in our studios. We won't breathe on you. We won't lick you. <laughs> we'll get nowhere near you. But to have I you in. I don't want Skiri to be anywhere. I want Skiri to get you. That's okay. That work. I want him to shower, get dressed. <laughs> and we'll, I have want... a, we'll do a restraining order against Gary. That's no problem. Yeah, it's no problem. Absolutely. But well, thank listen, you. I hope you guys are having fun because your show, I've been told, is uh, you know, you guys have a really, really great show and you've been very successful and good for you because it's. I'm learning that uh, you know, as you know, 
this field is crowded. It's so crowded, mm -hmm. this radio podcast field. I mean, everybody, people call me and they go, you want to do my podcast? People that I know. And I'm like, no, I already have my own podcast. I have one, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Why would yeah. I compete against I, myself? I, mean, I, I, talk, I talk once a week to people like like this, but it's interesting how it's, it's, it's become so competitive these last five years. It's crazy. So, All right, a couple of rapid questions, then we'll let Alec go. Yes. Uh, Gandhi, go. Oh, okay. So you said you're in charge of all of the content. Are you nervous at all with the cancel culture that's going on that you're going to pick a topic that people are just going to rage about? Or are you kind of like, forget it. I'm doing what I'm doing. It's mine. I think that you've got to be mindful of that cancel culture because I have a theory that because people now believe that their political uh, uh, thoughts don't matter, that, 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 that other than voting, that you have really no influence over the government at all, like cancel mm -hmm. culture has become the place that they want to have a voice. Right. They want to be able to, they want to be able to think that their opinion matters. And because it doesn't matter in Washington, really, that they've decided that they want it to matter elsewhere, which is condemning people who they believe are uh, inappropriate in whatever way. And, and, and some people, of course, deserve, I don't like the word cancel, some people deserve for there to be some consequences for what they've done, we all know, who be on that list and there's other people right. who um you're you're uh, uh you, you got to wonder what the facts are because it's not journalism what happens right. on the internet is not journalism it's just it's just a, it's a mob you know so anyway uh my question is when are we getting the next boss baby <laughs> danielle i love you more than life itself boss baby is was punted from march to september so i and that's oh. not official by the way but they moved the release date because of the covid and people always ask me, what's the greatest film you've ever made? What's your greatest performance? What's the film that's the most important to you? And the answer <laughs> is Boss Baby. <laughs> Boss Baby is my godfather. We love Boss it. On the waterfront. It's the greatest movie I've ever made. I love Very it. Very good. <laughs> Final question. Uh, now with a new administration rolling into the White House, what about you as Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live? Is that done? That's it's done. all over. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're going to have... Uh, uh, I guess uh, Mikey's going to play tr uh, uh, Biden, and uh, um, and that's a good thing. Or Alex is it, is Alex Moffat or Mikey? I think it's Alex actually, and that's going to be a great thing. And uh, you know, we did it. What was originally supposed to be a couple of shows, nobody thought he was going to win. Oh my god, it was so good. <laughs> I was going to do a couple shows, and then I'm laying in bed with my wife, and we pass out, and I and I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, and I read my computer, and it says Trump won, and I wake up my wife, and I go, he won. And then my wife just goes, oh, and she rolls over. And I, and I softly said to myself, now I've got to play this fucking character for the next four years. <laughs> but you did it so well. Lord is my friend. But anyway, so that, that's over. Yeah, now that he's gone. I think everybody wants to move away from that now. <laughs> well, yeah. you know. Well, look, yeah. it, having you here, again, a great honor. Alec Baldwin. Again, it's Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin. Listen to his podcast and support. Thank you for Mr. coming Bell on. Mr. Bell is our first guest. Thank you all very much. Oh, wow. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Alec. Take, take, take care, Alec. Have a great day. Yes, Gary. All right, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Alec. The Mercedes-AMG Interview Lounge.